I'm showing here a kinematic diagram of an articulated manipulator that matches the one that we built in the last video. When we tested our switches in the last video, we determined which direction of rotation was positive for each of these servos. I'm going to draw that direction in here. If your directions were different than mine when you tested your switches, fill in in your kinematic diagram the positive directions that you found in your servos. We found that for my servos, the positive direction of the second servo was this way because the link moved up when we moved it in the positive direction. But for the third servo, when we moved it in the positive direction, the last link went down. So this is the positive direction for servo 3. Now I can draw in my axes to be consistent with these positive directions of rotation. Z has to be the axis of rotation and I have to draw it so it's consistent with the positive direction that we drew. X and Y just have to follow the right hand rule. Z1 should be coming out of the page in order to make the positive direction of rotation consistent with what we drew. Z2 needs to be going into the page so that theta 3 is positive in the direction we've drawn. That leaves Y2 pointing down. The end effector frame I get just by copying the frame before. I also need to label my link lengths. Now I have everything I need to find the homogeneous transformation matrix from frame 0 to frame 3. We have to start by finding the homogeneous transformation matrix between each adjacent frame. We have to find H01, H12, and H13 and then multiply them together to get H03. I'm going to do that now, but I encourage you to try to do it on your own first, since you're going to have to do things like this on the test, and you're going to have to do things like this anytime you build your own robot in order to find the equations. So it's good to practice it now. If you want to try finding it on your own before I give you the answer, pause the video now and find the homogeneous transformation matrix. Now I'll walk you through finding the homogeneous transformation matrix from frame 0 to frame 3. Let's start by finding H01. To do this we're going to need the rotation 01, the displacement 01, and then we'll fill in zeros and a 1 here. Let's find the rotation matrix first. I know that on the left I'm going to need to have a rotation matrix that represents a rotation around Z. So I'll write that one here first. On the right I need the part of the rotation matrix that shows how we get frame 0 to match frame 1. I'm going to use the little trick that we learned in the last set of videos to do the shortcut to find this. I see that the new x is in the same direction as the old x, so a 1 goes here, and I fill in zeros. Next I see that new y is in the same direction as old z, so I put a 1 in the intersection of new y and old z, and fill in zeros. Lastly, I see that the new z is in the opposite direction as old y, so I fill in a negative 1 and then zeros. I'm going to multiply these matrices together and fill in the result over here. Next, I need to find 
the displacement vector from 0 to 1. The displacement vector is the vector between these two points right here. This vector is a distance of a1 in z. That vector does not ever change no matter what the value of theta1 is. So the displacement vector 0, 1 is just 0, 0, a1. And we're done with h0, 1. Next, let's, let's do h1, 2. We need the rotation from 1 to 2 and the displacement from 1 to 2. Let's do the rotation part first. There's a rotation of theta 2 around z, so I'll put that in first. Then I'll use the shortcut to fill in the part of the matrix that tells how to rotate frame 1 to get it to match frame 2. My new x-axis, x2, is in the same direction as the old x-axis. So I put a 1 in the intersection of new x and old x. And I fill in zeros for the rest of that column. New y is in the opposite direction as old y. So I put a negative 1 in the intersection of new y and old y. And I fill in zeros for the rest of the column. Lastly, my new z-axis is in the opposite direction as the old z-axis. So I put a negative 1 in the intersection of new z and old z. And I fill in zeros for the rest of the column. I'll slide this over here because it's getting close to the edge of the screen. This is my complete rotation matrix. I'm going to multiply these matrices together and fill it in to the homogeneous transformation matrix. Next, I need to fill in D from 1 to 2. The displacement vector from frame 1 to frame 2 is the vector here. Right now, this displacement appears to be A2 in the x direction, but this will change as theta 2 increases. As theta 2 increases, the center of frame 2 will rotate in the x1, y1 plane. The x component of this vector in purple will become A2 times the cosine of theta 2. The y component will be a2 times the sine of theta 2, and there will never be any z component, no matter what the value of theta 2. So we're done with h12. Finally, we need to find the homogeneous transformation matrix from frame 2 to frame 3. We need to find the rotation from 2 to 3, and the displacement vector from 2 to 3. R2, 3 has a component of rotation around the z-axis. So I'll do that part first. The other part of the rotation matrix tells how to get frame 2 to match frame 3. Those two frames are the same. So the other part of the rotation matrix will be the identity matrix. I'm not even going to write that in because I know that when we multiply any matrix by the identity matrix, the matrix does not change. So I can fill in this rotation matrix into the homogeneous transformation matrix. Now I need to get the displacement vector. That's the vector from here to here. This appears to be A3 in the x2 direction, but that will not be true when theta3 increases. As theta3 increases, the end effector will rotate down like this, and the vector will be here, where this angle is theta3. I need to write this vector so that the vector will be true no matter what the value of theta3. The x component will be equal to a3 times the cosine of theta3. 
the y component will be a3 times the sine of theta3 and there will never be a z component. Here we have all three of our homogeneous transformation matrices. To find the complete homogeneous transformation matrix all the way from 0 to 3 I need to multiply these three matrices together. So I'll start by multiplying 0, 1 by 1, 2 and then I'll multiply that result by my third matrix. Now I'm going to take this result and multiply it by this matrix. I'm going to copy this matrix and put it down here so that we can see it while I'm multiplying it. In H03, we know that the result is going to have the rotation matrix up here and the displacement vector over here followed by a row of zeros and a 1. I don't care right now about the rotation matrix part of this. I only want to know the displacement vector because I'm just trying to figure out where the end effector is. I know that this displacement vector will come from multiplying the fourth column by each of the rows because the result is in the fourth column I only get these numbers from multiplying the fourth column so I'm only going to do the calculation here of the fourth column by each of these rows so multiplying the fourth column by each row gives me this result tells me the position of the end effector. The first value tells me the x position. The second value tells me the y position. And the third value tells me the z position. In order to prevent the end effector from hitting the table, the only one we really care about is the z position. Since our zero frame has its center right on the surface of the board, the end effector will collide with the surface of the board when z becomes less than or equal to zero. Let's put this equation into our code. Then we can use the value z to prevent the end effector from moving in the case where the position it's going to will result in a z position that is less than or equal to zero.